Hello dear listener please subscribe to our channel enjoy watching. You always hear these stories, but you don't believe they'll ever happen to you. Betrayal, it's like the plot of some trashy romance novel or a story you laugh about with the guys. But when it does happen to you, the laughter stops. Everything you thought you knew turns inside out, and you're left wondering what's real and what's just a carefully crafted illusion. That's exactly where I was just a few months ago, staring down the woman I thought I'd spend my life with. Rachel. My beautiful Rachel. She was everything I could have wanted, the kind of woman you'd think you could only meet in a dream. I remember that first day I met her, how she'd walked into the room and turned every head without even trying. And somehow, against all odds, I'd won her over. We were married less than a year later, and I was convinced I was the luckiest man alive. But love can blind you. It was a Tuesday night when the first seed of doubt was planted. She'd been working late a lot recently, and I thought nothing of it. I mean, I had long hours too, and it was part of the reason we'd clicked in the first place. We understood each other's drive. But when I came home that night, something felt off. It was subtle at first, her bags tossed haphazardly near the door, a slightly disheveled look about her that wasn't like her. She usually took the time to unwind, to freshen up when she got home. I thought it was strange, but I didn't ask. I trusted her. Then, one night, I noticed a text notification flash on her phone while she was in the shower. Normally, I wouldn't even think about looking, but the message preview caught my eye. It read, Asterisk missed you today. Same time next week? Asterisk the name on the message was just a single letter, M. I tried to brush it off, but I couldn't ignore the gnawing feeling in my gut. So I waited until she was asleep and then, almost on autopilot, I picked up her phone. I'd never even considered doing this before, but something in me had changed, like I'd crossed a threshold I couldn't step back from. The message history was sparse, mostly quick exchanges, but there was enough there to piece together the truth. The texts didn't go back very far, but they didn't have to. They were cryptic, but the implication was obvious. Things like, tonight was amazing, and asterisk I wish I didn't have to leave so soon. Asterisk my stomach twisted as I read them, each message a small knife twisting deeper. I closed her phone, sat on the edge of the bed, and stared at her sleeping face. She looked so peaceful, so innocent. I wanted to shake her awake, demand answers. But I didn't. Not then. I knew that if I confronted her without solid proof, she'd find a way to deny it, to explain it all away. And I couldn't risk that. I couldn't let her have an escape. So, I decided to watch and wait. The next few weeks were hell. I could barely look at her without wanting to scream, but I forced myself to play along, to keep up the act. I was careful, though, I didn't want her to sense my suspicion. I went through her things when she wasn't home, scrolled through her emails, checked her social media, anything to find the smoking gun. I thought I was prepared for whatever I might find, but when I uncovered his name, his face, something inside me snapped. Matt, he was younger than me, but not by much. We had mutual friends, which made sense because he worked in the same field as Rachel. I'd seen him at a few of our parties, a quiet guy, polite, but always a little too friendly around her. I thought nothing of it, assuming he was just another colleague. I never imagined he was the reason my wife was coming home late, the one she was texting when she thought I was asleep. Now that I knew who he was, my plan started taking shape. Confronting her wasn't enough. No, I wanted her to feel what she'd done, to watch her world unravel the way she'd unraveled mine. I spent the next few weeks putting my plan into motion, working out every detail until it was perfect. I'd caught wind of an old cabin upstate from a friend who'd mentioned renting it out for a weekend. It was small, secluded, and not on any maps. Perfect for what I had in mind. I called up the owner, booked it for a long weekend, and told Rachel that we needed some time away, just the two of us. She hesitated, of course. Said she'd have to check her work schedule, even though I knew she had no plans. She was probably hoping to use that weekend to see Matt but I wasn't giving her that option. I watched her eyes flicker with something, fear, maybe, but she eventually agreed. 
I didn't tell her that I'd already reached out to Matt. I'd set up a fake profile, using an old photo and a fabricated story about how I'd found out about her and Matt's little affair. I told him I was a friend of hers, someone who'd overheard her talking about the cabin and figured he'd want to know about our romantic weekend getaway. It didn't take much to get him interested. In fact, he didn't even question who I was, he just wanted to know when we'd be out, how he could surprise her. The sheer audacity of it made my blood boil, but I kept my cool. After all, the plan was working. The day of the trip came, and I could feel the tension radiating off Rachel as we drove up to the cabin. She was quiet, fidgety, and I could see her stealing glances at her phone, probably checking for messages from Matt. I played along, acting like the doting husband, telling her how excited I was for some time away together. She smiled back, but it didn't reach her eyes. She was nervous, probably thinking I'd figured something out. The cabin was perfect, cozy but isolated, with creaking wood floors and heavy shutters that kept out all but a sliver of light. I gave her a tour, acting as if everything was normal, but I could tell she was uneasy. I suggested we take a walk by the lake, giving her a chance to settle in. I'd made sure to leave a window slightly open in the back, just like I'd promised Matt. I knew he'd take the opportunity. Halfway down the trail, I suddenly stopped and slapped my forehead, feigning realization. Damn, I forgot my phone, I said, shaking my head. You keep going, I'll catch up. Rachel hesitated, searching my face for any sign of suspicion, but I kept my expression neutral. She eventually nodded and continued down the path, glancing back once or twice, probably wondering if I was onto her. But by the time she disappeared around a bend, I was already sprinting back to the cabin. When I got back, Matt was there, just as I'd anticipated. He'd let himself in through the window and was prowling around, probably looking for a place to hide and surprise her. The look on his face when he saw me standing there, blocking the only exit, was worth every ounce of rage I'd swallowed these past weeks. I took my time approaching him, watching the fear spread across his face. He was frozen, not quite able to process what was happening. Expecting someone else? I asked, smiling. He tried to stammer out an apology, but I cut him off. I know everything, I said, my voice low and calm. Every message, every lie. You thought you could just sneak in here and, what? Surprise her? Make a fool of me? He was sweating now, eyes darting around the room, but there was nowhere for him to go. I stepped closer, letting him feel the weight of what he'd done. Finally, he cracked. He started babbling, throwing out excuses, even trying to blame Rachel. He said she'd come onto him, that she was the one who'd initiated everything. It was pathetic, watching him turn on her so easily. Just then, Rachel appeared in the doorway, her face paling as she took in the scene before her. Her eyes widened in horror as she realized what was happening. I turned to her, still smiling, and watched her freeze in place. You were expecting someone else too, weren't you? I asked, my voice dripping with contempt. For a moment, none of us spoke. The silence was thick, the weight of the betrayal settling over us like a suffocating fog. Then I turned to Matt and told him to leave. I'd made it clear what would happen if he didn't. I'd dug up enough dirt on him to destroy his life, his job, his family, everything he cared about. I watched him squirm, his pride crumbling as he realized he had no choice but to walk away. He left without another word, slinking out of the cabin, his head down in shame. I could hear his footsteps crunching over the gravel as he disappeared down the trail, leaving just Rachel and me. She tried to speak, her voice barely above a whisper. I can explain, but I cut her off, not wanting to hear any more lies. There's nothing left to explain, Rachel. I know everything. She stared at me, her eyes filling with tears, but I felt nothing. She had torn my heart out and stomped on it, and now she was facing the consequences. We drove back in silence, the atmosphere between us cold and empty. I filed for divorce the following week. She tried to reach out, left me messages, even came by the house once or twice, but I ignored her. She'd made her choice, and now she had to live with it. If you leave a comment, tell us what you think about the story you heard, 
it's important to us and will help us find and tell stories that you find interesting. Thank you for watching us.